Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about algebraic expressions and models. This is an example of an algebraic expression. An expression can be a single term or a sum of two or more terms. Here we have three terms. A term is a numerical value or the product of constants and or variables. Our three terms are x squared, negative 2xy, and positive 4. A variable term would be any term that changes with different values. So our first two terms are variable terms. And our last term, the 4, is a constant term because it's a value that doesn't change. It's always 4. Now the coefficient is the numerical factor of any term, or it's the number part of the term. x squared technically has a 1 in front of it, so the coefficient of the x squared term, or that first term, is 1. And the coefficient of our second term is negative 2. Next, we have a chart that summarizes some of the properties of real numbers. We have the commutative property, which says you can add or multiply in either direction. So a plus b is the same as b plus a. Likewise, a times b is the same as b times a. We have the associative property, so it doesn't matter how you group those things when you're adding or multiplying. You have the identity property of addition, which is with the number 0, so any number plus 0 is itself. And with multiplication, it's the number 1, so anything times 1 or multiplied by 1 is itself. And then we have the inverse property. When you add the inverse or the opposite of a value, you get 0. And when you multiply by the inverse, so a times its reciprocal, 1 over a, you get 1. And then the property we're going to use the most in this section is the distributive property which says you distribute this a through the parentheses to the two terms inside. So you get a times b plus a times c. In our first example, we're going to clear the parentheses by applying the distributive property. So we're going to distribute negative one-fifth to each of these three terms. We'll have negative one-fifth times negative 5 halves a plus negative 1 fifth times 10 b. Now remember this minus 8 for our third term is the same as adding the opposite. So we're going to do plus that negative 1 fifth times negative 8. Looking at the first two terms, we're multiplying a negative times a negative, so we'll end up with a positive. And we notice we have a 5 in the denominator and in the numerator, so this will simplify to a positive 1 half. And we have our variable a. In the second term, 10 is equivalent to 10 over 1. The 5 in the denominator and the 10 in the numerator have 5 in common which leaves a 2 behind in the numerator, and we get negative 2b. And our last term, the negative 8, is the same as negative 8 over 1. We have a negative times a negative, so we're going to end up with a positive. The 5 in the denominator and the 8 in the numerator do not share any factors in common, so we end up with 8 fifths. And these three terms are the simplification of that given expression. Now, what if we have more terms than that and things that look similar? Those would be called like terms. Like terms are terms that have variable factors that are the same. But the coefficients of these terms, or the number in front, can be different. And we can combine like terms. Okay, here we have a lot of parentheses. 
So to clear the parentheses, we need to start on the inside. So the innermost parentheses are right here. This negative 2 thirds times 6y squared minus 9. So I'm going to copy what's in the front, 2y squared minus that first bracket and the 13. I change colors and we're going to distribute this negative 2 thirds. So we have negative 2 thirds times 6y squared plus negative 2 thirds times negative 9. And then we're just going to copy the rest, the minus 10 and the plus 9. We're just going to concentrate on this blue section right now. That's the innermost set of parentheses. So keep this 2y squared, and we're going to keep this on the end. So looking at the blue part in the middle, 6 is equivalent to 6 over 1, and the 3 in the denominator and the 6 in the numerator share a 3 in common, so those simplify to a 2 in the numerator. We have negative 2 times a positive 2, which is a negative 4, and we have our y squared. The second term, we have negative 9, which is equivalent to negative 9 over 1. We have a negative times a negative, so we're going to end up with a positive. The 3 in the denominator and the 9 in the numerator share a 3 in common, so we're left with a 3 in the numerator and 2 times 3 is 6. Now, looking at the innermost parentheses that are left, we have some like terms, 13, 6, and negative 10. We can combine those like terms, our constants. 13 plus 6 is 19, minus 10 is 9. So we have 9. And then let's rewrite the other parts that we have. Left inside is a minus 4y squared. And then at the end we have plus 9. Now the only thing left to do with this parentheses, since we can't simplify it, is to distribute this negative on the outside. We have 2y squared minus 9 plus 4y squared plus 9. Now we're going to look again for like terms. Well, we have the constant negative 9 and the constant plus 9. Those together, well, that's our inverse property. So those cancel each other out. They add to 0. That leaves 2y squared plus 4y squared. Notice that these are like terms. They both have the same variable factor, y squared. The first one, we have two of these y squareds, and the second one, we have four of these y squareds. So we add those together to get a final answer of 6y squared. Now let's look at some application problems. Yeah, that's code for word problems. In the first example, we're asked to write an expression that represents the English phrase. The English phrase we're given is, Jason is one year younger than Carrie. In part A, we're going to write a statement for Jason's age, J, in terms of Carrie's age, C. Well, Jason, J, is, translates to equals, and then we have one year younger than Carrie. Well, that would tell us take Carrie's age and subtract one. Now in part B, we need to write a statement for Carrie's age in terms of Jason's age. Well, if Jason is one year younger than Carrie, then Carrie is equal to Jason's age plus one.
not too tricky. Let's look at one that's a little more involved. Here we have to write a mathematical statement that represents the given verbal model. The cost C in dollars to rent an apartment is $640 per month, plus a $500 non-refundable security deposit, plus a $200 non-refundable deposit for each dog or cat. We have a couple clues here. Per month is telling us to multiply. Likewise, for each is telling us to multiply. Let's look at what variables it wants us to use. So in part A, it says write a formula for the total cost to rent an apartment for M months with N cats and dogs. So we go back to our equation and our statement says $640 per month. Well, that's 640 times M. And we know we have N cats and dogs, so we have $200 for each times N dog or cat. Now we can slowly translate this into a mathematical statement. So our cost C is, remember that's equals, 640 per month, so $640 times M, plus $500, plus this $200, per cat and dog. Now, this statement is technically correct, but in math, we always put the variables first and in alphabetical order. So 640M plus 200N, and then that constant always goes on the end. Part B wants us to determine the cost to rent the apartment for 12 months so M is gonna be 12, and we have two cats and one dog. So N is going to be two plus one or three. So our cost then will be 640 times M, which is 12, plus 200 times three, plus that $500 security deposit. $640 a month times 12 months is $7,680 plus $200 for each of our pets, that's $600 plus 500. Add those three values together and the total cost is $8,780. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please check out some of my other math videos for more help.